What if I told you that the crisis that we are currently in and the collapse that looms ahead, inflation, unemployment, the loss of values, the conflating of morals, the polarization of the masses, and eventually market and societal collapses that almost inevitably only destroys the poor and the middle class has happened many, many times in history. What if I told you that the reasons why these crises occur are almost always the same reasons? The Roman Empire, Greece, China, Venezuela, Mesopotamia, the Persian Empire, the Spanish Empire, the English Empire, and the preludes of 1930s, 1970s, 2008. I could go on and on and on. 1637, 1797, 1819, 37, 57, 84, 1901, 07, 29, 1937, 1974, 1987, 92, 97, 2000, and whatever we want to call this. It's all just the same thing over and over. We can't help ourselves. It's always the same thing over and over again. During the Roman Empire and the expansion and conquering of new territories through war, the government was in need of more and more money and an ever greater need of goods to fund the army's advancement. The monetary system that they used was gold and silver. It was different to the monetary system that we use. We use fiat money, which basically just means money that has no value. The value is promised by the government. Fiat is a Latin word that means by decree. Our credit cards have no real money. They just have a promise from our government. And as long as we trust our government, that money is worth something. Because of the ever greater need that the Roman Empire had to fund those expansions of territory and pay for the war, they started to inflate their currency, their money. They started to inflate their currency steadily over a very, very long period of time. Because they used gold and silver coins, the way they inflated their currency is very different to the way our governments inflate our currency. They had to resort to a very direct way of inflating their currency. They made up all sorts of excuses about why they needed to collect and get back from the population all the gold and silver coins, such as defects in the coins and various other things. So they collected all the coins and they literally, they literally cut them and made them smaller coins of gold and silver. They chipped away the sides from all the gold and silver collected from all the previous coins that they made and they made new gold and silver coins. That was the way the Roman Empire inflated its currency. Does that seem at all familiar to you? Do you feel like you have less and less money having the same amount of money? That's right. Your government is doing exactly the same thing that the Roman rulers did. They make you have less and less purchasing power through inflation to fund their projects and various other government policies. And just as the Roman rulers did in the past, governments all around the world are lying to you about the reasons why your money is inflated. They say it's because of war, bad weather, climate change, COVID, etc. Just as the Roman rulers did, they are lying to you so they can steadily inflate their currency. Remember when I said that the money we use now is fiat money and that it's not worth anything? It can just be printed, right? Our government, unlike the Roman rulers, don't have to take back from us coins, banknotes, credit cards to inflate the currency they can just print more. That is the reason why our government is able to steadily inflate our currency by printing money. Our government's budget is in the era of fiat money. They are running what is called a perpetual deficit. That means the government is continually spending more money than it receives through taxation and other means. The government makes IOUs, bonds, debt promised to be repaid by the government. You basically lend money to the government, buy their IOUs, and they pay it back with interest. So the government makes these IOUs, sell that debt, print the money to pay the old debt, make more IOUs, print more money, and the never-ending cycle goes on and on. The currency is worth less and less as time goes on, and more money is printed, more debt is sold. Our current system works because there's still people, governments, banks, etc., willing to buy the debt of our country. If that were to end and all of a sudden all those entities were to stop buying our IOUs, that will ripple across the economic system in such a manner that the government would be forced to have their central banks buy their own debt 
by printing, causing a hyperinflation spiral seen many other times in history, such as the Weimar Republic, Zimbabwe, Venezuela, etc. Because no entity is willing to buy the debt, and the government is forced to print more and more money to buy that debt, that newly created money would percolate the economic system in such a fashion that prices would spiral out of control in the upwards direction, causing people to panic in such a way that because of the fear of higher prices in a very short period of time, a loaf of bread could cost three times what it costs now tomorrow, people would buy as much as they can even if they don't need it, causing the velocity of money to skyrocket and the hyperinflation to boost itself into a self-fulfilling prophecy that just runs out of control. The government, they can just print more and more when they want. Unlike gold and silver, which has to be mined, they are using a subvert way to tax you and me, normal common people, by printing more and more money. They, in simple terms, make everything much more expensive, so your money buys less and less things over time, while your wages never catch up quick enough in relation to inflation. It's a subvert tax on people. It's basically theft. And because they know you would never agree to such a high tax through normal taxation, they do it through inflation and through money printing. We know how the Roman Empire came to an end. It was the poverty, loss of values and morals, the inflation of their currency. Does that seem familiar to you? Do you feel that all around you, the loss of morals, values and principles is taking over? Depravity everywhere you look? Anything goes, no boundaries, no values, no morals. Um, it's a hedonistic uh, cult, basically what they're Im implying. Another blaring example, drag queen story time. It's happening in Canada and America, where some public schools and libraries invite drag queens, some dress like torn demons, to read to young children. And it's a social deconstructionist agenda. They're using children, little five-year-olds, to accomplish this. And parents are waking up and saying no. When asked about parents' rights, OJ says... Well, actually, in Canada, parents' rights are limited and children's rights are put ahead. So the child has the right to be protected from the parents when the parents behave badly. Today, the moral eternal truths of life are questioned. Family, marriage, protecting the innocence of kids, even things as simple as biology and differentiating between a man and a woman, which is the most simple and basic truths of life. Even that is put into question. It's an important question. You said you're an EMT. Yes. Okay, if you're responding, you're responding to a health emergency. Biological male, somebody with a penis is, uh, is having a medical emergency. And they say to you, um, I think I'm having a miscarriage. Would you, would you check them to see if they're having a miscarriage? Would you consider that a possibility for them? Look. <laughs> no, but that's because some people don't have body parts. Doesn't mean they're not a woman. Okay. Sounds like we've established there are some people who, in principle, can get pregnant, and there are some people who can't. So there's two categories, otherwise known as binary. Lots of women can't get pregnant either. Yeah, but they're still of the nature to get pregnant. So that proves that women by their nature can get pregnant, because the simple fact that she can't shows you that there is something wrong. This is what is known as the exception that proves the rule. Whereas if a male with a penis can't get pregnant, no doctor on earth is going to run tests to see what's wrong with him. Because they already know it's that he's a male and there's only male and female, those who can get pregnant and those who can't. So, I, that's it. That's... One of the most important reasons why the Roman Empire fell was the loss of morals, values and principles of its people. They became a nihilist and hedonist population focusing only on life's pleasures, sex, depravity, laziness. Once a hard-working population became a pleasure-seeking and decaying in every way, the Roman Empire fell, 
not too long after. The collapse of the Roman Empire took hundreds of years, and it was a steady and slow process. But it seems we don't learn from our mistakes as a society. I've spoken in another video about how now we have 8 million able-bodied men not working. We can attribute that in part to the insistence of our modern society that men are not necessary or important for neither women or in the family role as fathers. We have taken away the role of providers and protectors from men, a role that gave meaning and purpose to 97% of men all throughout history. What do you understand about how men are seeing themselves and their role in the world given this change in terms of what they're doing with work? You don't, you don't have to be a sociobiologist to say that there is something unnatural about society and history's long-term providers suddenly being flipped into this position of dependence. Uh, and you don't have to be Sigmund Freud to think that there might be some sort of psychological fallout from this inversion here. Being a man is now seen as toxic. Women are told they don't need men. They are told that having a career is much more important than having families. Porn addiction is sweeping Western world. Men and women have gotten the message. And we have 56% of young people between the ages of 18 and 30 not even looking for any kind of relationship, neither short term or long term. Really insane fact that every single one of you needs to know. Pew Research recently unpacked the data that 56% of young single Americans today aren't looking for any relationship at all, either casually or committedly. 56% of young single Americans aren't interested in hookup culture. They aren't interested in dating apps. They're not interested in casually dating someone for a few months and letting them go. And they certainly aren't interested in becoming engaged or getting married or having a long-term fulfilling relationship with someone. We're looking around at the lies of dating culture and realizing it's not even worth it because the powerful lies that have have told us that sex is transactional, that pornography is empowering, that we should be unaliving our babies at every opportunity possible because they are an inconvenience to us, that we certainly don't need to be committed to one person monogamously. Instead, we should sleep around with as many people as possible or even date multiple people all at the same time. That marriage is just a piece of paper. We could go lie by lie by lie, but we're looking around at all of this insanity in the world and realizing that it isn't even worth it. How unbelievably sad. And frankly, Gen Z deserves better. Remember the Roman Empire? Remember what happened after their values and morals fell? Yeah, Rome fell shortly after. Unfortunately, we have right now a perfect storm of events that could lead to a market or societal collapse in magnitude compared to the 30s depression, or even worse, a civil or world war. Polarization of the society is ever-present. You're on the right or on the left. You're a feminist or a patriarchal misogynist. You're in favor of trans people or transphobic. You're in favor of gay people or homophobe. There is no dialogue, no middle ground, and that inevitably leads to fighting, and fighting leads to war. These things happened all over again and again throughout history. It's the most basic human nature that we have to fight against. That in the not so distant past was celebrated as virtue. Today is seen as a bigoted way of being. In the 1930s, just before the Great Depression kicked in, the speculators inflated the price of the stock market to a staggering degree. They incentivized investing. Almost everybody literally was invested in the stock market. Shoe cleaners, business owners, farmers, everybody was in it to reap those gains. The stock market rose to an all-time high. Everybody was making a killing until they didn't. The problem was that a lot of people were in it through what is called margin investing. You invest 20, but only pay five. And when you reap the rewards, you pay the 15 back and keep the profits. Sounds too good to be true, right? That's because it is. And if your investment goes sideways, you owe money to the broker who made the investment for you. When Black Thursday came around in the 30s and the stock market tanked, everybody lost their money. And I mean everybody. Banks, business owners, farmers, and of course, that shoe cleaner. It was chaos. People lost everything. But remember what I said? It was the speculation that made everyone sick with greed. 
A bubble was formed and a bubble popped, taking everyone with it. Production in factories came to an end because people were not buying anything. They couldn't even buy food. How they were going to even buy goods. People lost their jobs, their homes, their livelihoods. People lost everything. Some people are unaware of how much everyone is still invested in the stock market today. They are unaware of how pension funds work. You work for 40 years, you put money into your pension, and when you retire, they pay that money back so you can enjoy your retirement in peace. Well, not exactly. We are forgetting one thing, inflation. If the money that you put into your pension fund was not invested into the stock market and things like bonds, IOUs, government debt, by the time you retire, if they paid that money back to you, because of inflation, you probably wouldn't be able to live more than two or three years, whatever, maybe more but certainly not another 20 or 30 years, if you're lucky to live that long. The money that you put into your pension has to be invested into the stock market so they can make it grow and can pay back some amount of money that at least could let you survive. So like in the 30s, most of society today is still invested in the stock market. The only difference is that now, unlike in the 30s, most people don't even know that their money is being invested in the stock market through pension funds and that the managers of those pension funds charge amazingly high fees for managing those investments and making the money in the pension fund grow. I'm not a financial advisor, but you're better off taking all the money you put into your pension fund and investing it yourself. If you're not comfortable doing that, you would still be better off buying gold or Bitcoin with that money. Like I said, I'm not a financial advisor. What would happen to all the pensions and if something similar to what happened in the 30s were to happen again? Pensions would have to default and millions of people would lose their pensions. Factories would close and millions of layoffs would occur, bringing down the whole economy with it. We're starting to see breadcrumbs of such a thing happening. We are already starting to see massive layoffs in the tech giants. Now, even retailers are joining. And my feeling is that this is just the beginning. Tough times lay ahead. The government would only have two options in a situation of that sort. Let the crisis hit and have the depression era so that all this bad debt could go away or resort to money printing. In light of what the government has done in the past decades, I doubt that they will stop the printer and let the depression hit. They will probably resort to printing more and more money, bail out more and more banks, leading to the inevitable end of yet another crisis that will for sure go down in the history books. I really hope we're not going to let the same mistakes of the past happen again. The only thing you can do is hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. Thank you very much for watching and like always, see you in the next one.